Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, 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 Last time we stopped with the ayah 49, we supposed to start with ayah 50. Let us go through with the meaning of ayah 49 again to know the uh, sequence, the continuation, uh, the context of the whole uh, issue. And remember when we deliver you from Pharaoh's people, or rescued you from the Pharaoh's people, who are afflicting you with the horrible torment, killing your sons and sparing your women, and there even was a mighty trial for you, Lord. That's what we learned last time. And today, I'm number 50, and remember when we separated the sea for you, and saved you and drowned Pharaoh's people, while you were looking at them, when the sea was uncovered them. And then I number 51, and remember when we appointed for Musa 40 nights, and in absence you took the calf for worship, and you were valley moon wrongdoers. 52. Then after that we forgave you so that you might be grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking here about when Israel the story of Musa salam, how he was uh, facing persecution and his whole nation from Pharaoh and his followers and how Allah subhanahu wa rescued him and the Bani Israel and destroyed the Pharaoh and his mighty troop. And the punishment of Allah came to the Pharaoh by the splitting of the Bahar, the sea. And the story uh, is, is known to all of us very briefly okay. uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Musa alayhi salam that Pharaoh is making the conspiracy plan to eliminate Bani Israel. Whatever he did is not enough because of the da'wah of Musa alayhi salam is going to. They take now the final action to kill Musa al Islam and his followers. So, Imam al Tabari mentioned, and Musa al Islam, and yes, we are in Mesa, the Bani Israel, he need to move now from this country to leave Egypt, to head beyond Egypt. And Musa al Islam, was preparing, told his nation to get ready and they must make his journey at the night time when Pharaoh and his family or his, his followers are in sleep and the darkness they will not realize, they will be not able to change them up. So Musa al -Salam want, started his journey. And there is no clear path, pathway for them to escape. There is no clear escape route, safe escape route. Any route they will follow, they will you know, chase them up. So by Allah's order, He has chosen the path of the sea, towards sea. And then number was at that time, Nayifan ala sittimiyat alf, more than 600 population of the Bani Israel. And the Pharaoh's number was alf, alf or me'atay alf. And the Pharaoh when he started chasing them up, their number was alf, alf means million. Million. And another 200. They are almost double of the Bani Israel's whole number. And amongst Bani Israel there are men, there are women, there are children, while Pharaoh is ready with his whole truth. All of them are fighters and the men. And when 
darah Israel alaih salatu wassalam who is Yaqub alaih salatu wassalam he came from Philistine to Egypt to be settled there he came with only sitta wa sarina nafsun min waladihi wa waladi waladi his own children and grandchildren in number reached to altogether uh, 76 persons when he made his hijra migration from Philistine to Egypt. Yaqub al-Islam's children, his family, his, his children, grandchildren, altogether the number of Israeli tribe at that time, how much? How? 76 only. And throughout all these centuries and generations, their number in the time of Musa al reached to 600,000, more than 600,000. Allah gave him much barakah to him. So, Sittamiyat Alf Min Al Muqatil, Sayyar Shimuk, Qadzubi Al Nisar. No, sorry, uh, correction. He has Musa al Islam's men who are able to fight the number of more than uh, 600,000. Whole population is much bigger. It's a big barakah of Yaqub al-Islam's family, the many Israeli at that time reached to that high number, good number. Then when he reached to the sea, in front of him is the sea. Uh, Bahr al-Qulzum. Bahr al-Qulzum is the Red Sea. Old name is Bahr al-Qulzum. Nowadays it's called Al-Bahr al-Ahmad, Red Sea. He now came here and his all followers sitting in front of them are uh, the sea. Behind of them is Pharaoh's troop are coming with big million, more than million people coming. They can see them. And his followers became very scared, panic. Oh Musa, it seems you have deceived us. He said Allah will give us victory. Now we can see <coughs> In front of me, uh, as the sea, and behind is a Firahun with big troops. Where is the escape route? We can't find them. We don't have uh, all these arms and ammunition to face them. Why, Musa, you, know, you are giving us all this wow, commitment? Your, your Lord is helping us. Where is it? But Musa was cool and calm. He said, Kalla, in a Maya, Rabbi Sayyidin. With me is my Lord, I'm not panic, I'm not scared, he will guide me. In a very calm voice he said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, commanded Musa alayhi salam, anitrib bi asat al bahr O Musa, hit with your stick the sea. Hit with your stick the sea. Hit the sea with your stick. Did he? That's a hit in the name of Allah. Fan falaka fakana kulu fertin kapau din adi. Whole sea is split in two. The water gone out from the valley in front of them, two sides. Big mountain, all water gone. And it is a big pathway came out. For them. Even they have a problem with the Bani Israeli. They have 12 tribes within that Israeli family. They must have their discipline. If not, there will be within them some kind of fight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them that their 12 tribes would be taking 12 paths. So 12 paths all together came. A 12 path, and some of the revisers suggest that between each path, there is a wall of the water. So it is not one road, it is 12 road came out. And when they are crossing, they can see from the, within the water, like a, you know, a see-through situation, they can see other troops, other tribes are crossing. Okay? 
لكل سبت طريق يتراعون every tribe has a path that they can see each other وكان وذلك أن أطواد الماء صار فيها تيقانا وشبابيك يرى يرى منها بعضهم بعضا so the water like see through or window type kind of, kind of holes so they can see the you know who are the other side of the world which tribe is going okay and then when they are about to all of them are complete and some of them are now cross the, the sea go to the other side and the remaining is uh, uh, some of the remaining are still inside they will be crossing very soon then Firaun will arrive with his troop and when he has seen that Imam Ibn Kathir Muhammad mentioned it that when Firaun came he was not that stupid to jump into the sea because it is not that something normal happening here, something abnormal. Why all this sea will be suddenly opening the pathway? This is not a magic, this is not something uh, a is not that stupid to understand and he was hesitating to jump in. And whilst he was doing his testing the situation, telling his other to go, go, I'm here, he's commanding. While he should be in the front, all the way he was in the front, but when the sea came, he was scared. No, this is not normal. What is happening? He is not feeling safety. Telling them, you go, you go. And his chance was, if everybody goes to the other side with number crossing, then he will jump in. Or he will be fighting if the people of the front line of his soldiers are facing something awkward, facing something terrible, he could run out. That was his, in his mind. So, but Allah subhanahu wa wanted, no, he will be in the front. So, Imam Ibn Kathir mentioned this story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Jibreel alayhi salam, you know, with the command of Allah, Jibreel alayhi salam was chasing with his horse, the horse of Firaun. So Firaun tried to control the horse, the horse is going, going. He's tried to control it, but it is not listening to his control. It is running and jumping. When he jumped, his over to jump and they gone further. Allah SWT did not take him in the very fast moment. He took him further down, further to the deep sea. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an order, command to the sea to come from both sides. At that time, Musa Islam's all follower escaped go to the other side and Firaun's whole troop is came to that this deep sea, deep area, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the both sides of the sea can come and hitting each side to other like this and they were at that time drowning, they started drowning and drowning. And they told you know when Firaun is about to drown. He was saying, I now believe, Aman to be Rabbi Musa wa Harun. I believe in now with the Lord of Musa and Harun. He started to say that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al Al Bantal Asait. And you have been doing all this time disobeying me. Now, when I caught you, you are accepting the Imam, your Imam will be not. So Tawbah is accepted until the last breath comes to the Gargara al One Malam Yugharda. In Allah Yaqbal Tawbah al Abdi, Malam Yugharda. Indeed, Allah accepts Tawbah of His servant until the Gargara, the last breath struggled here in the halak, in the throat, started. Until that time, your Tawbah will be not accepted. When you see that death of Angel is there, all people are taking place in Utah. At that time, in fact, every kafir, every Muslim, every enemy of Allah says, I believe in Allah now. Because they see the angel of death. They see all this and they see his all power is gone.
Everyone, every criminal would like to become Muslim. No way. That is the time you missed it. Too late now. Okay. And that is the day which is day of uh, Ashura, in fact, it happened. And you know the story of Ashura, uh, hadith of Sahih Muslim, and Rasulullah sallallahu came to Medina, Qadim al Medina, for what did the Yahudah see Yaman? Yama Ashura. He found the truth of Medina uh, fasting in the day of Ashura, which is 10th of Muharram. Faqar Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the, this day? What is the speciality? What is the significance of the day of Ashura? This is the day in which Allah has drowned Fir'aun and his follower, and Allah has given submission to Musa and his قوم, his nation. فَصَرَهُ مُوسَى شُكْرًا فَنَحْنُ نَسُوهُ So Musa used to fast this day every year to thank Allah, to appreciate Allah's mercy. And we, the Israeli nation, continued from his time until today to fast. By hearing this answer, Rasulullah Sallallahu said to them, نَحْنُ we have more right, we deserve more than you to fast because of the salvation of Musa Because Musa is a prophet of Islam, he's our prophet. And Prophet Muhammad came to, uh, to say the same thing which Musa said, which Ibrahim brought. Which Isa brought, the old prophets are saying down, and they, are, they know right each other. And every prophet is on the heart. But later on, their follower who claim the Ummah, they are not properly following him. So, Muhammad is really on the path of Musa. Muhammad is on the path of Ibrahim. Huh? So, he said, We have more right than you. And from there, he even encouraged Muslim to follow or to, to fast that day. He said in another hadith, Antum ahakku bi Musa minhum fasuhu. O my ummah, you have more right than these Jews uh, of celebrating uh, the appreciation of Musa alayhi salam. So let us do it fast. That's why this ummah fast. And the reward of the fasting of Ashura is you know, very high. Uh, in one of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said, Siyam yawna ashura ahtasibu ala Allah yawna kafira samata allati qablah. Akhadahu muslim al-tilmini. That the fasting of Ashura, I hope, Allah will cause it uh, to expiate the sin of the past year. Whole one year sin will be expiated because of Ashura day fasting. And then the ayah concludes, وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Oh people, when I was screaming, Musa alayhi salam, your prophet and your nation, and Pharaoh is drowned with his follower, وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ You are seeing them. These Jews of Medina were witnessing at that time? No. Why Allah is telling them? Because of their forefather, they are addressed. That means your forefather was seeing them. How? After the death, Fir'aun and his followers are, you know, they are floating on the sea level. And when Musa was they witnessed all this, they are floating, they are dead bodies. Once you see your enemy who was trying to kill you, to eliminate you, to whole nation, and you see Allah is punishing them, and if you see that, it's much better than you don't see them. When you see them, you think, SubhanAllah, you are more grateful to Allah, you believe it. Even some of the riyaya suggest, uh, when they got a bit far away from it, because sea is not like a small river, 
uh, Musa alayhi salam's ummah from the other side and the, the wider sea is uh, they are floating there but they were so much scared of Pharaoh and his power, his might. Some of the ummah was telling to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, inna kuduwana la taqmain, inna Pharaoh qad gharik. We can't believe. Are you sure the Pharaoh is dead with? Are you sure Pharaoh is drowned? Are you sure he is king? So they are not about what to believe. You know when something amazing happened, something unbelievable happened, something so mighty, it will be not, you know when, uh, remember uh, in the Moscow when the, 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 the Soviet Union uh, fell down, you know, uh, the, the biggest statue of Marx and Lenin is dealt with. When you hear this news, you think you can't believe that. So, they were like that. Yeah, Musa, he's not proven a lot of mine. We are not satisfied yet. Are you sure Musa, he's dead with? He's killed, really? They are so scared of him. So, then what Allah said? Hatta amar Allah al-Bahra fa lafadahu fa nadaru ilayhi. So, what Allah subhanahu wa commanded the sea, and Musa uh, told his to come closer to the sea, to the bank. And the water brought him, floating him very close to the shore, uh, to the beach, to the, to the bank of the sea. So they can see, yeah, yeah, that's true, it is wrong. Alhamdulillah, he's dealt with. So that's why Allah said, I have made sure that you see, you watch it. Not only for that generation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that to the Firaun, the Firaun we are dead, being dead to you today, but I will save your body. Huh? So you will be Ibrah. Ayah. Letakuna liman khalfaka ayah. I'm going to protect your body for longer time. So you will listen for many generations after. So because of that, plan of Allah to get Pharaoh's body longer time in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given in the mind of Egyptian this technology of modifying that technology, what they call it? Huh? You know, the way you can keep the dead body for a long period. Even if you go to the main museum of Cairo today, Pharaoh's body is there, lying down. It's still there because it's modified. So this technology, even Western scientists are going, still doing research. What material, chemical they use to make these bodies are not rotten and not, you know, uh, become, uh, you know, uh, powder all this time how they are still kept intact. What technology it is? They are not getting any clue. Anybody have seen him, Ephraim? None of you? They have seen it, mashallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity of seeing that. Now when I was seeing the main one, his side, his side became a bit squeezed now because of like uh, dry. So it's a small size, but this is the main one when I, I was uh, checking with the uh, people at the museum, the main from which one is, there's a lot of bodies mummified. So they said, this is the main one. So I went to him. I said, you are the one who said, Anarabukum I am the highest Lord. He told the Egyptians, Anarabukum I am your highest Lord. Who is Musa you're telling to Lord to worship? Who is the Lord? I am the highest one. People should worship me, not anybody else. Where are you now today? Have you got your answer? Subhanallah, subhanallah. So Allah made his body still kept. So all those who are the criminals of the world, who show their might and power to claim so much, they are not getting less of money. Even the rulers of the Egypt copying to become another pharaoh. When they are in power, they 
didn't care to kill many people until Allah caught them in the, with the Arab Spring. These Pharaoh are not getting the sun. Today, in many parts of the Muslim world, there are a lot of Pharaohs sitting down. And many people, non believe, are going to believe, visit them and doing research. But they don't know why this body is still here. How to know about his creator. This mighty man, he thought he has a lot of power. His highest Lord, what his consequence was. Okay. And then, okay. So another device suggests some of the uh, Egypt, some of the uh, Bani Israel are not even believing. They can they say no, Pharaoh can't be died this way. Mama Pharaoh. Some of the weak believers in the camp of the Musa Ummah say, no, no, impossible if Pharaoh will be dying this way. Okay? Allah Musa, you are lying, they are telling to Musa No. Then Allah said, So Allah brought him to very close to the shore, huh? to the sea beach. Okay? Yetarahu Banu Israel, Banu Israel watching by their own eyes. Falamat Mahanu, when they got, they seen him, they became satisfied. Or Bu Isu in the little bar in the Madai of Pharaoh, Hatta Lakalu Kunuzahu, or Garepu Finema. And these people, when they are rescued, many of the Banu Israel, they couldn't believe Pharaoh is dying. After that, when they were rescued by Allah, they go on to the other side. So Musa left them in a place and told them, Worship Allah, and Allah has given me an appointment to see him, to receive the Kitab Torah. I'm going there for 40 days. When I come back, inshallah, we'll have more discussion about Islam. He went, okay? And let his brother Harun is in charge of the Ummah, guide them how to follow right path of Islam. But these people have seen, some local people are worshipping some other anyway, uh, gods, statues. So one of them was Samiri, a corrupted man is in his Ummah. He made a calf. Okay? Uh, for them. And trying to invite people to worship this calf, to do this shirk. And seeing the other people are doing shirk, uh, the, the Ummah of Musa asked Musa Alayhi Salam, Oh Musa, we don't see our Ilah Lord Allah. We need somebody in front of us like a God. We can worship Him. So can you make an idol for us, a statue for us, an idol? We can worship Him as these people have the idol. They know who they are worshiping. We don't know who and who we are worshiping. This is the level of the Imam. Then the Samiri found this weakness. Shaitan came to give Oswasa, make a calf, a small cow, a calf. So um, he, Musa al left, he made this calf, and then uh, they were washing it. Okay? And then what happened? That story is coming later on in the following ayah. Allah said to Bani Israel, Then I have given appointment to Musa for 40 days. He should come to Turisina, huh? Turisini, the mountain of Sinai. He will come here. And stay there and be receiving the Wahi, whole Kitab of Tawrah within 40 days. When he was absent for 40 days, you have taken Kaf after him as you know to worship. Wantum Dalimun. This way you are big Dalim. You are really, uh, you know, wrongdoers. And this period of 40 days, according to many of the Tafsir, Zulqa'da wa Ashara bin Dilhijjah. 
the month of the Qada and fast 10 days of the Hijjah, the period of the Hajj. <coughs> And it happened after they crossed the sea. After they had appealed to Musa, and when Musa you say to us, Allah said this, Allah said that. What is the book of Allah we don't see? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Then you are coming to receive the kitab Tawrah, come to the Sina area. فخرج إلى الطور في سبعين من خيار بني إسرائيل. and they also say it is not enough. your Allah will give you kitab and will speak to you. that's not enough. we need to have the verification of your claim. you're saying when he comes to you, your Allah speaks to you. we don't see any good news. so then they agreed seventy of their representatives will be going with Musa alayhi salam to the mountain of Tur to listen to the conversation of Allah okay so they are witnessing yes Musa is claim Musa's claim is true he speaks to Allah he doesn't speak to the shaitan no this is the thought about the prophet this way they think about the prophet was Sa'id al Jabal and they want the very peak of the mountain and they were giving them a 40 days appointment by Allah. فَعَدُّوا إِشْرِنَ يَوْمَنَ وَعِشْرِنَ لَيْلَةً So the people of the ground level who left behind, they said, 20 days gone, there is no sign Musa is coming back. I think he lost the Mahmud, he lost the path. Let us summary brought the God, this is the God. It is here, Musa gone to the mountain. Why? God is here. Let us worship him. This is their story in the ground. And those with him in the, uh, in the peak of the mountain, then uh, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Musa al-Islam, giving him a wahi, and these people hear him. Seventy people went with him to be witness. witness. They are saying to Musa, oh Musa, we can hear if God is speaking, but we don't see him. Until we see him, we can't believe it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became so angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the mountain from their underneath their feet on their up their head. And now coming to cash there. Musa said, oh Allah, if you kill all of them, my ummah will blame me. He took all of our witnesses to kill them. They will call him Allah. Allah, give them give their life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give these people are crying to Allah, Allah is we are so you know regretful that we ask all these. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop the mountain to catch to them. And then they, they came back while these people in the ground in the field who left for 40 days, they were doing the worshiping the calf. He found his ummah, not everybody, good number of his ummah is now in shirk. A prophet of Tawheed left the ummah to come back to see they are engaged in shirk. He said it's so sad. He went, he sees that many of them are doing shirk. He went to his brother first to hold the brother's beard like this and he started hitting him. He didn't do the duty, my Ummah is doing Shirk, what you have to do in Yaharun? He said, my brother, listen to me first. Ya Ibn Ummi, my, ma my mother's son, we came from the same mother's belly. Please listen to me. I tried, I tried. I didn't do father because father means that we brought Shirk started. I thought, I will wait until you come. May these people come back to their cells. I tried they may all be in all means. Only left that I will be starting war with them. I did not start war. I thought it becoming a final decision is in your hand. Then his brother Musa came down and then he was telling the people, Ya Kaumi, Inna ma futin tumbi. 
oh my Harun uh, al was telling them before Musa Harun al was telling them Ya Qaw Inna ma futantum bihi Oh my nation you are tested now by this Ilah of Samiri the God he made the scarf he made uh, it is a fitna for you Wa inna rabbakum ar-Rahman Indeed this is not your God Your Lord and God is Allah ar-Rahman Fattabi'uni wa ati'u amri You uh, follow me Please don't worship this Listen to my command But they also say Qalu lan nabraha nihi aakifin Hatta yadya ilayna Musa He said okay fair enough he said us But we are not going to listen to you He still will be worshipping him Until Musa comes If he says it is wrong then we may listen to him. When Musa came at that time, practically they were worshipping. Musa was so angry. He was carrying with him 70 plates of Tawrah. Out of anger and sovereign sadness, he could not control himself. He threw the Kitab of Allah and went to take action and went to catch his brother. Later on, he came down and he was kneeling, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the first salah here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fatubu ila bari'ikum faqtulu anfusakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah. Okay? You have been worshipping the calf after tawheed, you became mutad. Your punishment is to chop the head. Anyone who was worshipping this calf, he made a shirk, therefore he became murtad, apostate. His punishment is to chop his head. So, what happened? You know, in the, in the dawn time, uh, in the night time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that those who are worshipping they will be standing in one line. In front of them, the other will be standing who are muahideen. While following Tawheed, they are not committing shirk. People of shirk should go other side, and people of, shirk, people of Tawheed will stay this side. And these people of Tawheed will take sword in their hand, and in the night time, they will be killing all these in front of them, just chopping the head whoever they get. Okay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this too dark. So who were from the side of Tawheed? فَقَامُ بِالْخَنَادِرَ وَالسِّيُّ فِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضُ مِنْ لَدُمْ تُلُعِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَى إِرْتِفَاعِ الدُّحَى From the very dawn or sunrise to the duha, to the almost midday, they were killing. Just cutting, chopping the head of the other. And they knew it was those who are killed, this is their tawbah. They not only do tawbah stuff for Allah coming to Tawheed, no. If they want Allah's uh, you know, forgiveness and tawbah for this crime, they must allow their head is chopped. So they agreed. فَقَتَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضَ لَا يَسَلُ وَالَدًا عَنْ وَالَدِهِ وَلَا وَالَدًا عَنْ وَالِدِهِ even in front of the father is the son was worshipper of the calf or the father was worshipper of the calf son is chopping his head without hesitation okay so big number is killed some of the rewires suggest around 70,000 of them were killed Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam is making dua to Allah Ya Rab قَدْ فَنِيَتْ بُنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ Oh Allah, Bani Israel is going to be finished this way. So big number is finished. Oh Allah, save the other's life. After their dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, give an order, order, stop it now. Then, who are stopped after that while not killed, they were the fortunate, because of their preparation, they were ready to be killed, they are also forgiven. 
their tawbah is accepted. And those who are killed, they are also forgiven, their tawbah is accepted. This is the reference Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making. ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَا عَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ After that, I have forgiven you after that. Hopefully you will be grateful. So with all this crime of shirk, I have forgiven you. Of course, those who are killed, they need to be forgiven going to Jannah. And those who are not killed, Allah has taught them, and they did sincere Torah, Allah has forgiven them as well. You say, you are to the moon. While you are doing this shirk, you are a very big wrongdoer, and you are unjust, violent. Doing shirk is the biggest dhulm. dhulm. Inna shirka la dhulm Why they are called dhalimun? Because they are committing shirk. So inna shirka la dhulm You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given Bani Israel chance of tawbah by the shirk is not forgiven until they chop their head. They are killed. For this ummah, there are many mushrikun in this ummah, worshipping not necessarily the idol or the statues, but they are worshipping the graves, mazars, shrines. But if any one of them today is sincerely coming to do tawbah, he don't need to chop his head. Allah is kareem for this ummah, that tawbah is accepted without <coughs> This kind of big punishment, but they need to do. If not, they die in the shirk. In Allah, la yaghfir an yushraka bihi, wa yaghfir ma duna dalika bima yasha. Allah is not going to forgive to make shirk with him, but he is willing to forgive any sin for whoever he wants to forgive. So that's why the shirk is so big crime in the shirk. The story finishes here, and the following ayah 53 will be our next week lesson. Still, the story of Bani Israel continues. I like to We will stop here, taking if any desperate question, inshallah, to deal with. As Firaun is getting punished at the moment, absolutely, it came in the Quran. In one of the Quranic ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he is being punished in his in his barzakhi life. Okay, the question will come. Is he punished in the museum of Cairo or is he punished in the grave? He's not in the grave. It is called Qabr Adab is great punishment. It takes place in the barzakhi life. The body which you see today, the body of human being, if you bury him today, after 50 years, his body is not there. Maybe some bones on him. But he could be getting nirma of the great life if he's a believer, or punishment if he is a kafir or sinner. This, you may think, well, if he's in the grave, we can understand. So what about the one gone through with the cremation? Why is it easy? Have no idea you think. Eaten up by the lion, somebody in the jungle of Africa, or by a crocodile, halas, digested everything. What is this human being? How his grave punishment or name is taking place? This is not with the particularly with that particular grave and this. That this body is to live in this world only. This body work for this world. For the jannah, this body will be not working. Another body will be given to us. In the birth of life, what is the birth of life? After your death, before resurrection, all this period is called life of birth. How our existence is, we don't know that. If you dig a grave today of 10 years ago, 20 years ago, buried man, he can't make any judgment. This man is, what is happening to him? This is another world. We think from our, this world's system, different system. In the grave or in the barzakh life, is different system. Our ruh never dies. It is a journey of the soul. 
from Alam al Arwah, Lord of the Roof, came to the mother's own, fit in the body in the fourth month of the day. This body is now and after the birth in this world. This body will be eaten up by the soul, by the, by, by the soil, by the earth, and given another existence in the birth of life, further another existence in the life hereafter, after resurrection. But the soul is saying, how soul is, what kind of existence in the birth of life, it is right, it is not known. Allah knows only. But we believe in the birth of life as we believe in Jannah, as we believe in Jannah. So Firaun, uh, in the morning, in the evening, he is getting a bit of taste of Jahannam every day in the morning and in the evening. In the Quran, it is mentioned. Every day in the morning, in the evening, he is getting taste of Jahannam. Not the one which is in the museum of time. How and why? It is in the knowledge of Allah, it is in the unseen, it is in the Qayyim. But in Yawm al he will be giving the Ashad al-Adhaab. The worst kind of punishment is expected, is waiting for him in the Akhira, after Resurrection Day. Now, simple test of Adhaab every morning, every evening. We don't see it, how and where it is in the knowledge of Allah. Allah bin Ayyub bin Nunan Ghaib, we believe in the Ghaib, Allah. One of the prophets of the woman, a lay old man said, All lady, do you know? All ladies will be not going to Jannah. Prophet says to an old lady, All lady started crying, in the This old lady, why I call this old lady and we don't go to Jannah? He said, No, don't worry. Inshallah, if you go to Jannah, it will be very young lady. So that means we will be not the same body. It is different. Nasha Okra is another Nasha another kind of existence and generally size will be bigger bigger in the jannah to enjoy more bigger in jahannam to get more punishment you know one of the hadith said that kuffars and the one shoulder to another shoulder will like a whole mountain to get more punishment so the day and also People will be resurrected, not circumcised. Now all of us are circumcision. We'll be without circumcision, that means it's not exactly the way we die today. Somebody died very old, very weak, you know, somebody very young. No, everybody will be in equal position. A different kind of structure. Uh, it's difficult to to to, to uh, Imagine all this, but subhanAllah, so many things will happen there <coughs> appropriate for that world, not appropriate for this world at all.